One super common complaint I see in the MTB Fitness community, which is the Facebook group, is that people struggle with really tight calves. They might be on a ride and they get tight, they might cramp, or it could be when they get home they find that the calves are just tightening up and cramping and just feeling really uncomfortable. Now there's a few common causes for tight calves which I'm going to talk about in this video and I'm also going to show you four ways to relieve that pressure in your calves and to improve your flexibility so that you get less pain, less tightness and you can move around better on the bike and you're also going to get less cramp in your calves as well. So enjoy this video. Before you watch it, what I want you to do is hit subscribe and turn on the notifications and then for every future MTV Fitness video that comes out, you'll be the first to know about it. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So first of all, why do a lot of mountain bikers actually get tight calves? What is it that causes it? So one of the main causes for us mountain bikers is that when we're pedaling on the bike, we're not moving our ankle and our foot through its full range of motion. So full range of motion for your ankle is when your toe comes right up to your shin as far as it can possibly go, and then it goes all the way down to the bottom, like that. Now when you're riding, you actually only move your calf a little bit. So what happens is that you don't move it through that full range of motion. Now over time, over thousands, tens of thousands of pedal strokes on a ride, you can't get tighter and tighter and tighter over time because it's only going through that limited range of motion. So it's really important that you do exercises and stretches to help improve that full range of motion. You've got to think when you're on the bike, you want to be able to, first of all, you don't want to be getting that tightness because it's painful. And the other side of it as well is that when you're descending, you need to have really flexible calves and really elastic calves so that you can drop your heels down, you can soak up those bumps. When you're hitting a rock garden or manualing or doing anything like that, you're dropping your heels to drive the bike through. And if, you're tight, if your calves are tight, you're not going to be able to drop your heels to be able to push you through that rock garden. So it's really important that we improve them. So what I'm going to show you now are four things that you can do, either before a ride, after a ride, any time of day, essentially the more often you do these the better. I'm going to show you four things that you can do to relieve the pressure on your calves and improve that flexibility. So I'm going to show you two stretches and two exercises that you can do with a foam roller that will really help loosen up the pressure in your calves. Now this first one that you're going to do, you can do it before a ride, after a ride or even throughout the day. You're just going to do it in a slightly different way depending on when you're doing it. So first of all, if you decide to do this stretch before a ride, you're going to do it dynamically, which means with movement. If you're doing it after a ride, you're going to do it statically, where you just hold it. So all you're going to do, hands against the wall or a nice fence, put your back foot back, one foot forward, and then just drive this front foot forward. And then what you're aiming for is a real big stretch right in your calf back there. Now, if you're doing it after a ride, just hold it for about a minute. If you're doing it before a ride, I do it dynamically, which means you do it with movement. So I would do reps of this. So you're going to stay there and then do about 10 reps of pushing in and out. And what that will do, it will just help improve the range of motion whilst also warming up the muscle a little bit as well. So that's a dynamic stretch and you do 10 to 15 reps of those before. So after a ride, do it statically and just hold it. Before a ride, I probably do it dynamically, which is with movement. And you're aiming for a really big stretch right in the back of your calf. Now for this second stretch, all you need is a step or a set of stairs, something like that, so that you can drop your heel off the back of it. If you do this one before a ride, I'd probably do it right at the beginning of a warm up. If you're doing it after a ride, then you can just do it at the end and do it for as long as you like, and you can also do it throughout the day as well. So what are you gonna do for this one? I often like to hold on to something, but it's okay as long as you've got decent balance and you get yourself securely into place. So just get the front of your foot on there, lock your leg out, and then all you're gonna do is drop your back heel off the back of the step and you should feel it stretch right up your calf in there and then all you're going to do is just hold that for about a minute and you should really feel it stretch i can feel it pushing right into my calf right now and all you're going to do is hold that down there if you push your bum backwards that helps push the stretch even more you can probably tell by me wincing and just hold that for about a minute there so that's a really good one for getting right into your calf and just pushing it down into that position it needs to get into probably notice as well with that that that's the exact same position your heel should be getting to when you're descending to drop your heel um, on the bike so it's really good for a crossover to the bike with that one so for this third one you're gonna need a foam roller now you can pick these up on Amazon for 10 20 quid something like that they're really inexpensive and all they are you generally is a piece of hard plastic with some softer plastic on the outside now, the reason that you use these, you have something called fascia which surrounds your muscle. 
Now that's like a sausage skin essentially, like if you picture a sausage, you've got the meat inside which would be your muscle, the sausage skin would be your fascia. Now you can often stretch the muscle, but that skin around the outside can stay really tight and knotted. And that's where a foam roller can come in to help you relieve the pressure on those tight areas. So all you're going to do with this is pop it on the ground, you can do this in your front room watching telly, you can obviously do it outside if it's sunny, and then you're going to lift it up and just roll back and forwards on your calf. You're going to go all the way from your bottom, right near your Achilles, right up to just underneath the back of your knee. You're not going to cross over your knee, just go up to the back there. And then all you're going to do is roll back and forwards, and then if you get to any tight spots, you can just hold it on that tight spot there to let it ease off a little bit. And what you want to make sure you do is that you get all sides of your calf, so you work from the outside to the middle, and then to the inside as well. And when you get to the points that are tight, like that, which is painful, just sit on that and just wait until the pain dissipates and then carry on rolling. And you can do this for five minutes on each leg. Like really take your time and work through all around your calf and that'll just help ease off the fascia and help ease off the muscle as well. So it's an addition to stretching as well as foam rolling. Now this fourth and final one is one of my personal favorites because you can really feel it while you're doing it. Now all you need for this is either a weight or a tennis ball or a golf ball, something like that. You're gonna pop it on the floor and then you're just gonna help stretch off that fascia underneath the bottom of your foot. What happens there, you've got that fascia that we were talking about, connects from the bottom of your foot all the way up into your calf, so this can really help relieve that pressure. So for this, you're just gonna start just on the bottom of your arch and just step onto the weight and then you're gonna lean down onto it and you'll probably really feel it in those tight spots. I'm just gonna hold it for about 10 to 15 seconds until you feel the pain kind of ease off. And then move forward ever so slightly, push down, and then hold it for 10 to 15 seconds. If you're doing it with a golf ball or a massage ball, you can just roll it back and forwards, but I've just got a weight at the moment. And just move forward and ease off. Now I'm using quite a chunky weight at the moment. The thinner that the handle of the weight is, the more pressure that it'll put on. So just experiment using different things. But you can take about a minute to two minute on each foot and that'll really help ease it off and as soon as I've done this one like I did about five seconds there and I can feel that that right side already feels a bit looser than my left side just because I've only done that one it's a fantastic one this one now with these four stretches you want to do them as often as you possibly can so I do them before you ride I do them after a ride and I'd also do them throughout the day as well with stretches and exercises like this the more often that you can do them the better a big mistake that a lot of people make is that they see the benefits they improve the flexibility and then they stop doing the stretches now you want to make sure that you don't do that you need to keep doing them you need to keep working on it and you need to keep building that flexibility up over time and then when you're seeing the results from it keep doing it don't stop doing it now to find out about further MTB fitness videos just press this little bubble here and you can subscribe and if you like to watch my pre-ride MTB stretches then just click this video here and you can go and watch that. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time for another MTB fitness video.